Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben Parks, 225 marathoner, and I ran my first marathon 22 years ago. Back then I had no idea what I was doing, making so many mistakes and so many decisions I wouldn't dream of doing now. I've run nearly 80 marathons since, so let's go through those things I wish I knew back then so you can avoid making those mistakes on your marathon journey. So the first mistake I made with my marathon training was I didn't do any warm-up races. Believe it or not, the first race I ever did was the London Marathon. Well, technically I did a few little bits of cross country at school when I was very, very young. But when I was training for those first marathons, I did absolutely nothing. I got to race day and it was all just very scary. Now the importance of doing warm-up races, and I say warm-up races, really these are like, even if a 10K, half marathon, a 20 mile race, things like that that will get you really prepared for the big day. What you're gonna get out of doing warm-up races is they force you to turn up at a certain date, at a certain time, and be ready to go. You can practice your whole morning routine. How are you getting? there what are you having for your breakfast practice that and make sure that's going to be sitting right in your stomach you can also practice your fueling and practice your race pace as well and practice running in crowds which is something we really don't do in training obviously but it's a skill and it's an art going in and out of water stations, taking on board fuel as you go along, all things that you can really practice. So when you come to your big race day, when it really matters, you practice all of this stuff and it will become second nature. The second thing I did a lot when I was younger was I didn't practice in my race day kit. Now insert a footage of me running Chicago in 100% cotton tee. It got so wet and heavy, chafing happened and I had a pretty miserable experience because I didn't practice in this so I didn't know what it was gonna be like. Now, of course, I'd wear some technical gear that I'd have got off at benparks.com where you can find amazing t-shirts and singlets and running hats as well. So when you're standing on the start line, ready to go, you know that the shoes, the socks, your singlet, your hat, the gels that you're running with, you've practiced with them and they're going to be perfect on the day. Hopefully this will have been in a race, but it should definitely be happening in some of your long runs as well. A lot of people come to me and say, I don't wanna use my good trainers, I don't wanna wear them out. Well, you've really gotta get at least 30, 40, 50K in your shoes. I would really really suggest before going off on your race day. Don't worry, they're not gonna wear out, they'll have plenty of life left in them, and you'll be far more confident knowing that you're not gonna get any blisters, any hot spots, and all that sort of stuff, and you'll definitely have a much better race. The third thing I would always be getting stressed about is if I missed a run, maybe I got sick, life just got in the way, or I picked up a little injury and had to miss a few days. Pretty much every training plan that you follow, you can get to about 80, 85, 90% of the runs. If you hit those, you're gonna be absolutely fine on race day. But really don't stress out about it too much. The most important thing is just to build that consistency. Training really doesn't have to go perfectly to hit your race goals. You will miss runs and workouts, and there may even be a visit to the physio too if you do pick up a bit of an injury. Don't miss a few runs and think, I've got to make this all up and I'm going to do an extra extra five miles on Friday, an extra five miles on Saturday to make it up. It's gone, it's in the past. Just pick up your training plan and carry on with it. Following a training plan will really help with this. It will take the stress out of knowing what to do every day. Of course, check out benparks.com. We've got loads of training plans on there to help. No one run or no even two runs will make or break your race. Every runner on the start line will have been through some sort of drama through their training block. Everyone is gonna have those doubts and those thoughts in their head that they can't quite get it done. But don't worry, well over 99% of the people that start the marathon do make it to the finish, you'll be absolutely fine. The fourth area I'd really struggle with is not respecting my rest days. I'd always have to be thinking I need to be doing something on every single day of the week. Now if you have one of our plans, you will see we have prescribed specific rest days in there and that genuinely means rest, no cross training, no strength training. It just means living your daily life as you ordinarily would. These are part of the marathon training, just like your workouts are, just like your long runs are. When you're resting on those rest days, that's when your body's adapting, becoming stronger, and you're making those changes to become a better runner. Marathon training is very, very difficult. We're putting our bodies under a lot of stress, and it really is gonna need that extra sleep, that extra rest to recover and become stronger. So please respect those rest days. When I was younger, I was always picking up little injuries and it really was so, so frustrating. Nothing particularly major, just things that would just put me out for a few days. And thinking back, I never did any sort of warm up just for the naivety of being young and kind of being able to get away with it. And I certainly never did any cool downs either. 
Now we've got a really good warm up and cool down follow along video here on the channel. Please, please put this into your routine. I know it sounds like a bit of a luxury, but ideally spending five, six, seven, maybe up to 10 minutes warming up, especially important for any older runners out there, but warming up before you go off on your run and having those first couple of Ks or that first mile, very relaxed and very easy and let your body warm up. It's a little bit like taking your car out in the winter. You don't just wanna start it up and absolutely floor it from the off. Your body needs time to warm up and adapt, get those muscles nice and loose and the blood flowing around your body. And it will massively reduce your injury risk, especially if you're gonna be going to some marathon pace work or doing some speed work as well. So we'll link to those videos down below. Go and give them a follow along when you next head out the door. And finally, probably the biggest mistake I made in my marathon training was not practicing with gels, with fuel, and then equally not taking them during the race as well because I just wasn't used to it. And then what that would normally mean is hitting that dreaded wall around about 20 miles into the race, around about 32, UK and then having to walk it in. So it's so important to practice with your nutrition during these long runs to avoid hitting that dreaded wall. You will need some fuel during those long runs and during the race as well. There's a very rough guide for an average runner running an average time. It's around about 60 grams of carbs you're gonna need. So for a lot of gels, that's around about a gel every 30 to 40 minutes approximately. It's much, much better to carry your own fuel with you as you run and not rely on what the course is giving out. If you wanna rely on what the course is giving out, research it and practice with it during your training. And then finally, try lots of different types of gels as well. Don't just use what the influencers are telling you to buy. Buy a few different types. Check out X Miles, their website here in the UK. You can buy lots of little individual gels. Try a few things out. Try some natural gels, some bigger gels, some smaller gels, different varieties, flavors, textures. We've got a really great video. Again, we'll link to that down below. Taste testing and showing you what a lot of these gels look like. Practice, practice, practice in your training. If you're going out for 90 minutes or more, definitely take some fuel with you stuff some in your pocket get used to the taste get used to opening it get used to getting it in your mouth and getting it down and digesting it as well and make sure it's going to be all right with your body so that's it guys hope you found the video useful let us know how you're getting on with your training what is your next marathon maybe we'll see you out there that joe's video i promise is coming up next so stay tuned for that keep on working hard keep on getting done we'll see you very soon in the next one